Well, good day, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the next video. Guys, I wanted to do a, a, a short video about this that summarizes what it's going to be like when Jesus returns and takes the Jews and the Christians together and makes them unified under him as the one Messiah, the one leader, which is prophesied in the Bible. So if we look at this, what I have a picture here, if we look at what's on the right, on the right here, these are the 12, I'm sorry, these are the 12 tribes, 13 states, there's 13, there's two Manassehs, when the whole house of Israel entered the promised land under Joshua, sometime around 1200 BC, around there, 1250 BC, and there was 13 states, Asher, Naphtali, Zebulon, Issachar, two Manassehs, Gad, Ephraim, Dan, Judah, Simeon, Reuben, it was 13 states, 12 tribes, okay? Then we read from Ecclesiastes, what has been done is what will be. What has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. If you look to the left, you see the United States of America, a nation full of peoples that came into being in the 1770s. And it was 13 states, which is kind of weird. And there was two Massachusetts now, if you compare that to the right here, you see that's eerily similar. Now, what does all this mean? Well, it just means that there's something strange about the USA. It's not like any other nation that's ever existed. The hand of God has been on this country. And of course, as a nation, collectively, we've left God and we kill the babies and we do all sorts of crazy things. We send our armies all over the world and we blow things up. Because we like to do that, I guess. I, you know, I don't know. It depends who's in charge. Collecting taxes, spending money on defense, you know, all that stuff. So what happened to the original Israel is that a few hundred years later, they divided. So Judah, let me see here. Um, in our 930 BC, we had the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. I've talked about this. These two divided in here, 930 BC, and they have never been uh, recombined. They're not unified. Israel today, the 10 lost tribes, has not unified with the southern kingdom of Judah, who today are the Jews. So we ask the question, well, where's Israel today? Well, Israel was scattered all over the world, essentially. But could Israel be this nation here? Could be. So, we know that when Jesus was here, why did he come the first time? I was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, when Jesus came into the land, in the land of Israel, 2,000 years ago, it was only Judah that was there. Israel had been um, spread. And there's even references to the fact that there was a multitude north of them across the Euphrates River. And Jesus actually sent his disciples to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to, to share with them this gospel message. So the people who became the Jesus believers and Christians after the time of Jesus, that's who Israel is. He came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, just like he says here. So let's let's speak about when these two are going to be reunited because they weren't reunited at the time of Jesus because he wouldn't have spoken that way at that point. Okay, so I have I have a short study I want to go over with you. And uh, some people say, let me just say this. Some people say that when Judah was exiled and then returned back into the land 536 BC that some of the northern kingdom reunited with him. And that's true. A remnant did. But that doesn't fulfill the prophecies given to Abraham and to others about that his descendants would be as numerous as the sand of the sea. So let's jump up here real quick to some other verses I have in here. Um, Genesis 35, Abraham, Jacob was given promises. Jacob was told that out of him would come a singular nation and a company of nations. Okay, and in Genesis 48, who's that company of nations? Well, we'll see. In Genesis 48, he was told, um, Jacob tells Joseph, says that God said to him, 
The promise made to Jacob that he's telling Joseph is, is that I will make you a company of peoples. So why did Jacob only mention the company of peoples? And he didn't mention the singular nation to Joseph because Joseph had nothing to do with the Jews. See, the, the tribe of Joseph are the Christians across the world today. Joseph has, has engulfed the world, but specifically, in my opinion, it started with the UK and the USA. So the descendants of Ephraim and Manasseh shall carry on the name of Israel, because look what the blessing says. Bless these boys, Ephraim and Manasseh, and in them let my name be carried on. And they shall grow to a multitude in the midst of the earth. So Israel will become a multitude in the midst of the earth. The little tiny nation that's called Israel in the Middle East is not a multitude in the midst of the earth. So there's something, there's some confusion going on. So let's jump to my study I have on this right here. Okay, so this is something I've never seen really people talk about. There are four sets of verses in the Old Testament that speak about the people of Israel and the people of Judah coming together at a new covenant with a new leader and reunifying, which hasn't happened yet. So Ezekiel 37 speaks about the two sticks, Judah and Joseph, house of Israel, being joined, one king, no longer two nations, no longer divided in two kingdoms. So let's hone in on this prophecy here. Son of man, take a stick and write on it. For Judah, the Jews, and that remnant of the people of Israel that joined them in 536 BC, then take another stick and write on it. For Joseph, that's in the hand of Ephraim, the stick of Ephraim, and all the house of Israel, that's the Christians. The green are the Christians here, guys. The blue are the Jews. This explains the confusion that we continue to see amongst everyone trying to understand when we see the word Israel in the Old Testament prophets it has nothing to do with the Jews. The Jews are Judah, right there. Take the stick of Judah. That's who the Jews are. I'm raising my voice because I just, I go out of breath trying to explain this, but that's okay. For Joseph, take the stick of Ephraim, the house of Israel, the Christian church that's associated with him. And join them in the one stick. Then the Lord says, And one king, that would be Jesus, will be king over them. And they shall no longer be two nations. There shall no longer be Jews and Christians. They will no longer be divided and argue about all you know the stuff that we argue about. And it says, My servant David, that's speak Old Testament, speak for Jesus, shall be king over them. And they shall be have one shepherd. That was written in 600 BC. Now, what did Jesus say? To his Jewish disciples. Let's see what Jesus said and see if it compares with what Ezekiel was told. So Jesus is speaking to his tribe of Judah disciples and Jesus says this, John 10 verse 16, and I have other sheep, other sheep, the house of Israel, the Christians. He's speaking about when he returns in glory. They, they are not of this fold, of this Jewish fold, and I must bring them riding white horses behind me when I come in Revelation 19, I'm ad-libbing, and they will listen to my voice. So Jesus says, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. He said that in 30 AD. Okay, So it's obvious that Jesus knows history, that the two flocks didn't come together, that this small little remnant of the people of Israel that joined Judah when they returned back does not constitute this other group that's more numerous as the sand of the sea, as Hosea tells us. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Another ignored prophecy. I, I can't get anybody to look at this. Even my Jewish friends, they, they just ignore it. They, they think that they're the children of Israel. And I've asked them, I says, well, you're not that numerous. you know. So let's look at Hosea 1, verse 10. This is talking about uh, at the time of their of the Valley of Jezreel and the harvest at the end of the age. Let me read it here. Yet the number of the children of Israel, not Jews, shall be like the sand of the sea, billions, not millions, which cannot be measured or numbered. Billions. And in that place where it was said to them, you are not my people, were the house of Israel was kicked out of the land of Israel, 722 BC. In that place where they were kicked out of Israel, where God said, you're not my people anymore, northern kingdom, because of your idols and your calves of Beth Haven and your Jer uh, Jeroboam stuff, all that stuff, you're kicked out. 
It shall be said to them, Now you are the children of the living God. See, God is merciful to bring them back. Paul speaks about this in Romans. And then verse 11 says, And the children of Judah, that's Jewish people, and the children of Israel, that's Christian people, shall be gathered together, and they shall appoint for themselves one head, one leader, who's the Messiah, and they shall go up from the land, and for great shall be the day of Jezreel, that's the day of sowing, who also speaks about the day of sowing. Well, Jesus, in Matthew 13, speaks about the parable of the sower, which is the parable of the Jezreel event. Jesus answered and says, The one who sows the seed, the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. See, the sons of the kingdom are going to be sent out. Okay, The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest, the days of Jezreel, are the end of the age. The reapers are the angels. So Matthew 13 and Hosea 1 are speaking about the same set of events. Yet the children of Israel here in green are not Jewish. See, we have to change our minds to understand the Old Testament speak of who Israel and who Jews are. Our minds have been twisted and warped because of that Rothschild invention over there in the Middle East today. That's what we have to fix. And, you know, folks like maybe, you know, people that don't know this, they just get confused and they just continue on with the, this misconstruing what Scripture actually says. Okay. Jeremiah 31 has the same event. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will sow. Remember the sowing? The sowing down here that Jesus is talking about? I will sow the house of Israel... <clears throat> and the house of Judah, with the seed of man and the seed of beast. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the Mosaic, well, not like the covenant that they broke. Okay, so I, I, I had a very friendly Jewish person tell me that, you know, one day the Christians are all going to just start following the Mosaic covenant. And I brought this verse up with him, and he says, oh, no, 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 no. The, the house of Israel, which he says are the Christians, they're the ones who broke the covenant. The Jews never broke the covenant. I'm like, well, okay, but Jeremiah doesn't say that. And Jeremiah clearly says <clears throat> that the house of Judah is going to join the house of Israel and go into a new covenant, which is the new blood covenant that Jesus spoke about uh, on the night that he was betrayed back in 28 AD. See, look here. My covenant my Mosaic covenant, that they, Jews and the house of Israel, broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. So I, I can't even get the Jews to read their own Bible. This is their, this is their prophet. Jeremiah's a Jewish prophet, speaking about Christians in the future with a new covenant. Okay, Jeremiah, oops, sorry guys. Jeremiah 50 says the same thing. At the destruction of Babylon, what happens? When Babylon's destroyed, in those days and at that time, declares Lord, the people of Israel, Christians, and the people of Judah shall come together. Weeping, they're going to come. They shall seek the Lord their God. They shall ask their way to the heavenly Mount Zion. And they're going to say, come, let us join ourselves to the Lord in an everlasting covenant. That's the new covenant. Here it is again, Jeremiah 50. This hasn't been fulfilled. Jeremiah 31 hasn't been fulfilled. Sorry, guys. Okay. Matthew 25. This is the kicker here. This is where it all we hear. Because I have Jewish friends that say, oh, no, Christians, you're going to join us. I have my Jewish friends say, oh, no, 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 you guys, you Christians, one day you'll realize when Messiah comes, you're going to join us. Oh, oh, really? That's not what Jeremiah says. So Jesus speaks about there's a time when he himself is going to sit, well, the Son of Man will sit on a glorious throne. Before him... And when he sits, look, let me read it. When the Son of Man comes in glory, and all the angels with him, and he will sit on his glorious throne in earthly Jerusalem, before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate one people from another, as a shepherd separates, as a shepherd separates his sheep from the goats. Okay, so when Jesus comes, he's going to sit on a glorious throne. What does Jeremiah 3 prophesy about? Unfulfilled prophecy. At that time, <clears throat> in the future shall be called the throne of the Lord. That's when Jesus is going to sit on it. Did Jesus sit on the throne of the Lord in 28 AD? No. And all the nations shall be gathered to it, 
all the nations gathered to it. Jeremiah 3, verse 17. Jesus, Matthew 25, verse 32. All the nations gathered to it. Same thing. And he says this. They will no more stubbornly, our Jewish friends, who are stubborn about this stuff, follow their own evil heart. Okay, we all have evil hearts. All of us, even Christians. In those days, the house of Judah will join the house of Israel. There it is. Verse 18. The house of Judah shall walk with, shall join the house of Israel, who are the Christians who already believe in Jesus. So the Jews will join the Christians in their singular belief in Messiah Jesus. So the point of this, of this video is to just help everyone understand that when they read the Old Testament, when it says Israel, it doesn't necessarily mean Jewish people. That, that's where we get lost in all of this. Oh, boy, I got long-winded on that one, guys. Um, let me give you an example of that. Here's the one I like to share with people, okay? Jeremiah 3, Jeremiah 30, verse 3, okay? For behold, the days are coming, declared, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel, Christians, and Judah. See, the Lord's treating them separately, Israel and Judah. It's not the same thing. Israel is not a bunch of Christian, uh, a bunch of Jews. And Jude, it's not, a, not two groups of Jewish people. He's going to restore the fortunes of my people, two covenant peoples, Christians and Jews. These are the words of the Lord spoke to me concerning Israel and Judah. Unfulfilled prophecy concerning Christians and Jews. And it's the bad stuff. It's the distress for Jacob. I've heard a cry of panic, terror, no peace. Why does every man have his hand on the stomach like a woman in labor? Because he's seeing Planet X come that's been hidden from us with the NASA cloaking systems that everybody seems to not want to believe in. That's why we're 20 some trillion dollars in debt. Alas, the great day is the day is so great. It is a time of distress for Jewish people. Is that what it says? It's a time of distress for Judah. No, it doesn't say that. It's a time of distress for Jacob. Remember, Jake, out of Jacob's body would come a nation, Judah, and a company of nations, Israel. It's a time of distress for the Jacob, who was Jacob is Israel and the Jews, Christians, all that come from the body of Jacob. See, let's go back and read about what God said to Jacob. God said to Jacob, I am the God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. Out of your body, a nation singular nation, and a company of nations. This company of nations is the Christian nations. This is the singular Judah nations, the same Judah that's going to move that boundary line that begins to bring all these troubles. Okay. You guys can download all these, but this is the document I feel is the most critical in understanding the reunification of both houses the house of Judah and the house of Israel, the Christians. The reunification occurs when Messiah, the leader, comes at the days of Jezreel, the days of sowing, at the destruction of modern Babylon, Jeremiah 50. That's what that is. If you read verse 4, what does it say? Babylon becomes a desolation. And the people of Israel, the Christians and the people of Judah, are running like hell to get away from that place, and they're going to ask their way to heaven, to Zion. Okay, I think that's it for now, guys. Have a great day and God bless you.